Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. Local jams. Autodidact. There. Is it usurper or usurper? We're going to go with usurper. Because that's that's the thing. It's based off a song. They, all their beers are based off songs because they're... By there, I mean the Rons. There's two Rons there. Music hits. And this is their New England IPA with Rowaka and Citra Hops, 7% alcohol by volume. Picked this up at the brewery a week or so ago. Um, was in the area, popped in, talked to Tall Ron, and shot the shit, and picked up some beer. Now we're here. Uh, anything else on the can? It is 5.30, 24 is when it was canned. Today is the something or other... I don't know what t it's it's like early to mid June, so it's a couple weeks old. Um, Autodidact, please recycle this can. Always love the can art, negative space. That's what I'm talking about, man. You always know about the logo. The logo's gonna hit you in the face, but then the can looks pretty. Yeah. yeah. One of the Rons, Ron I spoke to, graphic designer, so he knows what he's doing. So we'll see what's what. Um, had a couple beers while they had at Wells there. Had their Dark Horse, which if, if you like black IPAs, I I implore you to go there. Um, and this is something I didn't have while I was there. I just wanted to kind of review it and check it out. And we had it in can, so here we go. Um, that looks like a hazy IPA. Rich, turbid, dense, uh, but not super ultra buttered, squashy, spoon stand straight up kind of density to it. A little soapy edge to it. Orange core a little bit of kind of milky edged how we like our hazies to look 10 percent even towards double but what most people consider single words let's get those yeah yeah i mean it is it's and i hate when i say this but it really is a melange of all the core tenants that come to when people kind of call out fruit uh, in a hazy, because I don't want to... I'm trying to move my little light here so it works better. Um, I don't want to trivialize it, but I'm saying it, it sounds like, almost sounds like I'm saying it's generic, um, but I think it's giving you your, your stone, your citrus, your tropical, in equal degrees, but in, in a relatively violent manner. I mean, you're getting gobs of citrus here, pineapple, grapefruit, orange. You're getting... I got a burp you're getting those stone fruits in here and you're getting those tropical fruits in there I would say probably a little bit more melon leaning for me but it's getting you all those bits and pieces now nothing here comes at least a precursor of overtly sweet uh, 7% hazy IPA you expect there to be a decent sweetness here but nothing here is overtly sweet at least the perception of it um, and I don't get this big pop of anything that's going to lead me to a bittering I think we're going to get a juice on juice on juice thing I'm curious if you get a little bit of you know we're talking about Rowaka here we're talking about Citra but Rowaka might get a little bit of scallion thing I don't know but it smells like the juice in the beer is there I guess I just gotta taste it. See what else is going on. Cheers, y'all. Mouthfeel. Oh. That's a great beer. But it's really the mouthfeel that lands this one for me. There's this softness and silky sultriness to this. That is like top-notch level stuff. Really giving me that kind of the setting the stage for what I want to, what I want my hazies to be, and this is delivering on that. Now, the fruit portion of the show, that melange of fruit that you get in the nose, it's there in the taste. It's a bit more kind of tempered uh, than what you'd expect based off of the nose, and what you'd want at seven percent. It's something I get typically at a lower ABV kind of impact, but it's definitely there. Just a little bit more tempered. The nose kind of set you up for something that you expect to be a little bit more explosive but it's still all there that's the thing the volume you expected the volume to be at seven seven and a half but it's more at like six you know if we go by abv that's kind of how when i when i talk about you know volume and, and how a beer impacts you know 
I mean, music. We're talking about music. We're talking about autodidact. They love their music. It's very different to listen to an album at seven, seven and a half than it is at six, five and a half volume. You know, it comes off a little bit more. It's a little bit less impactful. Sure, there's other portions at play here. Cleanliness of the sound, quality of the speakers, all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of how beer works too. But that volume portion of the show is a big part of it. And that's kind of where this one kind of lands for me is a little bit less than what you'd expect at a first seven percent hazy, but all the bits and pieces are there. But you can't just diminish how bonkers fantastic the mouthfeel is on it. That soft sultriness, that really nice kind of silkiness. It really just makes it an absolutely pleasurable beer from the get. Outside of that fruit portion of the show, the perfect level of sweetness for me. A little touch of kind of utilitarian bittering. Nothing too scaling, nothing too danky, nothing too crazy. It's more utilitarian, but it's there. It's a really tasty beer. If this were to like kind of add, this is for me, not for them. This is for me. This had a little green grassiness to it. Or if that fruit portion show had a little zip to it, it'd be like Mount Rushmore level stuff. Now, it's still up there for me. It just kind of misses because of that. But again, brewery, it's like, they're like, not even, it's like a year old, not even. Um, small place, you know, barely putting cans out there into the universe. Um, that's why I'm a fan. That's why I'm a bummer I don't live as close. Uh, or work as close, I should say. I still live as close, but I work in a completely opposite direction. But I'm glad I stepped by. I'm glad I picked this up. I'm glad they're just ripping, ripping and tearing beers because it's one of my, one of my favorite new spots. In Jersey, and you know, it, they're super close to um, 287, they're right off 80. Uh, you know, if you're traveling that route from Delaware Water Gap to New York City or 287, this is like hip hop, skip, and jump off there. So, you know, if you dig your beers, you dig cool spots, you dig good people doing good things, it's definitely worth something by. And this beer is a testament, a tenant to that. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I dig it, I like it. This is one of the better hazes I've had, is like, like I said, yeah. It's not Mount Rushmore status, but it, it's tasty. It's up there. Especially with that mouthfeel is really what really kind of brings it up for me. Value availability. This stuff tends to be a skosh pricey. You're talking about 7% IPA. I think it's probably pushing like 20 bucks for a four-pack. Small place is doing good. I'm not going to complain. Um, uh, not brewery only. They do distribute. Um, not wildly, but if you look on the socials, you should be able to find them. I know Bottle Kings in Jersey uh, carries their stuff. Kegs do live, leave the brewery, so always best to get it from the brewery. That money goes directly to the, to their hands, but they can be found. And leave you with, if you like what you like this. If you like well-done hazy IPAs and you really are a stickler for mouthfeel, you will dig this. Um, oh, Dad, have you been to the brewery? I have. Have you had their beers? I have. Have What's your favorite beer? Mine is Dark Horse. Have you had this beer? All that fun stuff down there. Hopefully you enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of autodidact right now. So we'll see you next time. Cheers, y'all.